All right, let's get into the papers now, see what the headlines are in Nigeria. Really interesting every morning in Nigeria when you see the headlines across uh, newspapers. So everyone looks forward to what the papers will be like. All right, uh, let's uh, have a gentleman in the studio. We have Dr. Dana Kere from the University of Lagos and as well a journalist, Ifi Onyegule, in the studio. Nice to see you all. Good to see Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. There's no lady, so it's, it's, it's <laughs> yeah. gentleman of the press. That's Thank right. You. That's right. Good morning, Nigeria. <laughs> nice to see you. Ifi, nice to see you. You've been traveling the whole world. Not the whole world. Oh, okay, fine. <laughs> Half of the whole world. Just Europe. <laughs> Welcome back home Thank anyway. You. All right, now let's start from the Daily Sun. That's where we start from this morning. And uh, he says, Oshamwale Oyegun feud, don't let APC die. That is the, the strong word there. The party chieftains beg Buhari to intervene. And uh, Senator Hates Chairman says party worse off, worse off in 2019 polls. Okay, uh, still the issues there back and forth. All right, from the Daily Sun, Let's go to The Guardian. The Guardian says Nigeria's yearly stolen fund worth 62% of 2019 budget. Analysts propose ways to stop illicit financial flows. Okay, uh, that's what you have on the front page of The, daily of the Guardian. All right, the next now is uh, Blueprint. Blueprint, let's go to Blueprint now, see what... Uh, the headlines there say, yes, uh, Blueprint says, uh, Operation Puff Adder, police nab 2,175 IGP seeks uh, tougher legislation, one's uh, corporate's assets seized. Okay, and 834 arms, two rocket launchers, others recovered. You can find all of that on uh, the front page of the Blueprint this morning. Okay, let's go to this day. This day is our next paper now. We'll take a look at Article Ways Options on Delay in Replacement for Bocachua May Petition NJC. Okay, uh, the controversy lingers there. Right, from this day, let's go to Vanguard now. Vanguard is the next paper. In security, Danjuma Lekwot others take Nigeria's case to UK. Asemota Dongunyaru Anibugu and uh, Opaleki Ihonde on the delegation. And Buhari fighting jihad, Christian elders tell UK Parliament and say Nigeria needs democracy, not uh, Sharia. Okay, you have all of that on the front page of uh, the Vanguard newspaper. Okay, the last is the, the nation. The nation is uh, talking on assets, CCB to probe Mark Udwa Uzodima, others, Ebony Rek, official under investigation for alleged uh, bribery. Okay. That's uh, all on the front page of the Nation newspaper. Now, uh, gentlemen, let's, let's look at this issue of uh, insecurity or security. I think the, the Vanguard newspaper talks about security and even blueprint. Now, the uh, Operation Puff Adder, which was launched by the Inspector General of Police, uh, there has been doing a lot of recovery of, of arms and weapons, Ill illicit uh, and prol uh, proliferated arms and weapons, and has been arresting... Uh, uh, cultists on one hand, armed robbers and kidnappers here and there. Dr. Ekeri, let me start with you on this. Uh, how would you assess the performance of Pofada so far, just a few months after launch? Thank you. Uh, uh, well, let, let's say that the, it appears the IG has some, you know, you know, some serious men around him that he's working with. Uh, perhaps he has brought some level of motivation, but most times you find that happen at the beginning of the tenure of, uh, you know, uh, most of them. Uh, what is left to be seen is whether this can be sustained. And again, you now find that so many people are arrested, and that equally happened in the past. Some persons were arrested, but we didn't really see much of what became of them. Whether they, I don't know if they are in prison as we speak. I don't know where they are. You know, but we've always heard of arrest, arrest, arrest. And sometimes, too, we equally, you know, realize that there are cases where you just find arrest to show that something is happening. So if these arrests are sincere, are genuine, that these are truly, you know, culprits, then let's see them appear and have their day in court. Let the courts make pronouncement on them so that we will be convinced that truly 
you know, what is happening. But, but we, often, yeah. we often hear the, the police authorities talking about the fact that they'll be charged to court, especially when, when there is a parade of some of We've the... We've always heard uh, that, yes. And, and they, they are charged but to court afterwards. But we are yet to see what becomes of them. So we, we need to see that process into the air. Don't forget that it is still the police that will do all the investigation. So whatever they do will be determined. I mean, at, at, at the courts, we'll be able to tell whether they've actually done due diligence, whether they've done their work the way it ought to be done. All right. If we, the point there is, when it comes to the capacity of the police, everyone has said times without number that the capacity of the police, forget about the image we often talk, say, okay, the police is corrupt and all of that. When they want to work, it is still the police that uh, one complains is corrupt. It's still the one <laughs> that works and gets results. Mm. So what is different between that, that the police that everyone sees and, try and tries to say they're corrupt and the police that is uh, delivering results? I think it's a systemic thing, just as um, Dr. Kerry has said here. You find that the police uh, sets out to do something. Maybe when a new man, there's a new sheriff in town, uh, the initial gra gra kind of thing, <laughs> you know, he comes up, he yeah. tells his men, they do something just to etch their names in gold, they do that, they make so much noise, they tell you some people have been arrested, you just mentioned now cultists, kidnappers, how were you able to determine that these are kidnappers, these are cultists? Do they have stamps on their foreheads? But isn't, what but kind isn't of investigation the, the police did you to do? determine all of that? Because so when it comes to investigation, when it comes to all of those uh, things behind what we understand and what we know, isn't it their responsibility to I find all of that out? Yes, I'm wondering why we're discussing this. Uh, the police is expected to do its job to the utmost, um, how do I put it now? I, what's that word now? They need to be up there when you talk about it but you know that you and I know that not a lot of Nigerians have confidence in the police I don't want to talk about what it is outside because people say oh don't keep uh, comparing but the police is supposed to be the one who's keeping the security but you say you've arrested this you've uh, you got this from them and that you show us the ammunition and all of that who are these people when do you take them to court how do we have a blow by blow account of what happens how many of them are in jail who is following up how do we know what's going on i just think that they need to be sincere with whatever it is that they're doing so that the people can get you know so they can get back the confidence that they once had in the police for me I just think that you've got to be open All right. with what it is. I, I, th I think one other responsibility will also be on the media to put the beam search light on the prosecution process that uh, the police often say is on. Sometimes. Now that so you've talked I about the media yeah. putting beam in its search lights, mm -hmm. I shared the post of uh, a young man, a non air personality in Port Harcourt, Kofi Bartels, to be precise. He saw something very unusual going on. And as a, c a good citizen, he tried to intervene mm -hmm. to say what's going on, and they gave him the beating of his life. That's the men of SARS. Mm -hmm. What are we talking about here? It's okay. Well, that's why it's before the president now to reform SARS and all of that. So we wait yeah. to see how that I plays out. We have to leave it here now. It goes Dr. beyond Kerry. reforming SARS. Yes. In fact, we've not, we've not really been getting any positive report about this SARS. Yeah, yeah, but... but well, no, but again, but it, must there be before, SARS before, before the police, president now? But must there be SARS but before the police will perform? Yeah, but, the, but since, since the president the decided the to take it up, Let's, let's give him the benefit I of the doubt. I think that name, SARS, is what is <laughs> giving them, yeah, all this uh, spirit of misery. Dr. Dekere, mm. <laughs> of the University <laughs> of Lagos, thank you very much for coming on the program. If you're welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you for thank having you. me. Yeah. It's time to take a look at stories making headlines in Nigerian newspapers. And I have with me a uh, gentleman uh, the, uh, from the University of Lagos, Dr. Dan Ikere, and a journalist, Ifi Unyeguli. Thank mm. you for coming on TVC Breakfast. Thank Thanks you. for having so me. Fun. All right, let's head straight to the papers now, and we'll start with the Daily Sun. Oshon Male Unyegun feud, don't let APC die. Party chieftains beg Buhari to intervene. Senator Hitz, uh, chairman, says party was off in 2019 polls. We move to The Guardian now. Nigeria's yearly sterling fund was 62% of 2019 budget. Analysts pr propose ways to stop illicit financial flows. And to the front page of uh, this day, Attic weighs options on delay in replacement of Bokachua made petition NGC.
On the front page of the Nation newspaper, assets, the CCB to probe Mark Odua Uzadima Avis, a boy wreck officials uh, under investigation for alleged bribery. To the front page of the blueprint now, Operation Puff Ada, police in up 2,175. IGP seeks uh, tougher legislation once uh, culprits' assets seized. 834 arms, uh, two rocket uh, launchers, others recovered. And finally, on the front page of the Vanguard, insecurity, Danjuma Lekwat, uh, others take Nigeria's case to UK. Asamota Dogunyaru Anigbogu, Owojaye Okpaleke Ihunde, and on the delegation, Buhari fighting jihad, uh, Christian elders tell UK uh, parliament uh, says uh, Nigeria needs democracy, not Sharia. Stronger laws needed to tackle crimes, IGP Adamu. All right, so uh, the story I'd like for us to look at is uh, the feud between uh, the <laughs> Oshomali and Uyegun, which has been on for some time now. And some uh, leaders in the National Working Committee are asking the president to wade into this matter. I'll start with you, Ify. Uh, it's, I think it's laughable to find that um, people who are members, in fact, leaders. Uh, one was a leader, you know, before another took over. I'm surprised that they're fighting and quarreling and bickering, and it's on the pages now of the paper. Now, it didn't start with uh, Oyegu initially. It was uh, the deputy, uh, uh, Shomali's deputy, asking mm -hmm. that he resign because of uh, the way he felt that uh, he, was, yes. he was the market in the party, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And now Oyegu came in to say that uh, he has now, <laughs> he's sort of uh, making the party worse uh, because he didn't, he left the party exactly, better. Exactly, exactly. Of course, he's saying, look, I left the party better than, you it know, is now. it is now. And you came, you've decapitated the party. Everyone is, you know, there are camps all over the place. But my, my point is, why can't they come together, sit down? It's about the party, not one particular person. But I think it's right for them to say, look, calling on the president to say, come in and do something about this. But if you ask me, I fear that there may be an implosion if they don't handle this. When you say you an know. implosion, how do you mean? That, uh, uh, the, the things the, might get... The fear th yes. that APC may die is, is going to That's happen. it. <laughs> it. It's there. It's clearly written. If you see what's happening... People don't look at what happened uh, during the swearing in. Sadly, I wasn't in the country when it was happening, but I was watching on TV and you saw how the man, uh, Oshamele, was marched out of that place. People were jubilating. You know, people were talking about it. It was all over social media. He, he had, you know, the, the, the way they were lined up was according to rankings. Uh, yes. and he wasn't supposed to stand. <laughs> he wasn't supposed where to be there. Stood. But, but then uh, let, let's bring in uh, Dr. Akere uh, uh, in mm. now. When you look at the way this feud is going, mm. is it about an issue of the president wading in, or how do you think this should be dealt with? Well, uh, when you look at it from the point of view of how even the APC came on board, you can't be without such intrigues, you know. But I was expecting that, uh, having come this far, essentially having won election, you know, spent four years, I expected that they should be, you know, improving on practically every situation. But uh, to not get to the point that those on board are still pointing accusing, but but it has been the habit of APC anyway, pointing accusing fingers at you know previous. Otherwise, what what should be the issue with Oyegun? You are in position. Show what you can do with leadership. You know, if you are able to carry the party in such a manner that surpasses the previous, it is left for the whole world to see. You know, but truly, when you look at it by way of record, Oyegun, as a leader of the party, as a chairman of the party, a new party, was able to win a presidential election. It's Which they did, okay. It's unprecedented. Are you getting it? Now, you did this. Oshamole, as a chairman, only won election as an incumbent. You know, so I expected that with him, having won the presidency, with him as the chairman, I expected that they should have covered more ground. But, sh you know, it's shocking to discover that under him, they even won lesser states. But mm. then so some persons are saying it because he is trying to ensure that there is party supremacy than what we had yeah, initially. If, if and so a lot of persons are not comfortable but with if, what he is doing. Are you saying party supremacy makes you know, a party to lose election? 
makes a party to lose influence? Is that what you are saying? Does it make members to hate a party? They knew that this is their party before. They, but if party supremacy is now an issue of an individual and not the decision, because when you talk about party supremacy, it will look as if, you know, some person are trying to veer off the decision of the party. If they are all part of that decision, because it's a party, if they are all part of that decision, then they will abide. But and when they see it as something that is coming from, it's an, when it becomes an imposition, you begin to find this kind of, you know. Now you're talking about his style of leadership. Now yes. when you look at it, like, like both of you were saying, you're saying um, Oshomale also helped win the election this time. I would, I would beg to differ there, because sometimes you look at it, that election, it was probably won because of a man that people still do not understand, the man, Muhammad Buhari. I wouldn't say it was because of Oshomale. And as, as Dr. Kerry said, it, he won it as an incumbent. Mm. There were structures there before he came on. Not many will agree with his style of leadership, the way he talks. Remember when he had that um, back and forth with Saraki, all the things that mm. he was saying? You wouldn't expect the leader of a party, the chairman of a party as it is, to speak in such a manner. So I just think that they should come to a round table, whatever kind of table, square, he whatever. <laughs> just come to the table, talk about it, and find a way. It shouldn't be about one man. It's a party. And some people sat down and formed this party, even before you thought about coming into the party. So you don't wake having up one morning and destroy discussion, that party. Having a roundtable discussion, do you think that will work? Because well, there have been several issues, and having a roundtable discussion seemed impossible. But I'm thinking, that at least, the party has, you know, an arrowhead they call leader of the party. The party equally has the president, you know. So if you have an issue of this kind, and you have such personalities, then uh, the, the, the only thing that is expected is that they should wait in. But if at the end of the day, All they right. are part of the challenge, then you are going to have a problem. Because mm. it could as well be that they could be part of the problem. All if right. they are, then it's going to be a very serious <laughs> challenge. Thank you so much for yeah. your contribution uh, on the newspaper review so far. Mm. You're watching TVC Breakfast, and we are streaming live on YouTube. You can connect with us on Twitter using the hashtag TVC Breakfast. Still to come on the show. And it's time to take a look at stories making the headlines and Marco Kocha is on standby. All right, thank you very much, Theophilus. We just hope Nigeria doesn't go back or slide back into recession again from we, all we the warnings we're receiving we hope from the pray doesn't happen governor. again. We hope and pray it doesn't happen again. I'm sure <laughs> it won't. The central bank governor is more than capable to handle it. Anyway, I, I just hope and feel that uh, the government is capable of handling this now. Thank yeah. you very much, Theophilus, uh, for all of that. Let's get into the papers now, see what the headlines are saying. And I have with me from the University of Lagos, Dr. Daniel Kere is here with us, as well as journalist Ifeo Nyegbule. Thank you very much for coming on the program. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. So right. Let's begin with the Daily Sun this morning. That's where we will shine uh, the brightness from. Oshamale Oyegun feud, don't let APC die. And uh, party chieftains beg Buhari to intervene. And uh, Senator Heads Chairman says party worse off in 2019 polls. That's what the Daily Sun has on its front page. From there, let's go to The Guardian. Nigeria's yearly stolen fund worth 62% of 2019 budgets. Analysts propose ways to stop illicit financial flows. We'll certainly be talking about this uh, shortly now. And uh, from there, let's go to The Nation. The Nation on assets, CCB to probe Mark Udua Uzodima, others, a Bonnie Rec official under investigation for alleged bribery. Uh, that's on the front page of the Nation newspaper. Le from there, let's go to this day. This day says uh, Atiku weighs options on delay in replacement for Bokachua, uh, may petition NJC. That's what's on the front page of uh, this day. Okay, from there, let's go to the blueprint now. Blueprint uh, on Operation Puff Ada, police nab 2,175. And the IGP seeks tougher legislation, wants uh, corporates, assets seized, and 834 arms, two rocket launchers, others recovered. You can find all of that on the front page of the blueprint. Okay, next now is the Vanguard. Vanguard says uh, on insecurity, Danjuma Lekwat, others take Nigeria's case to the UK. Okay. And uh, those who are praying are praying. Those who are fasting are fasting. Those who are doing everything possible to help Nigeria are also doing. Gentlemen, let's, uh, I'd li like us to dwell on this story on the front page of The Guardian uh, that says Nigeria's yearly stolen funds 
worth 62 percent of 2019 budget i'm not good in mathematics but if we have to uh, you know jiggle with the figures uh, the the budget for this for 2019 is around a 3 point uh, 3 3 point eight trillion. point something eight trillion point so points. if we're talking about 62 percent it should be uh, something within uh, around, over around four around to five five, five point trillion. trillion wow that is huge all right if we took if we take a look at um, the recent uh, buzz about the latest Abacha Luti in Jersey and how Nigerians are feeling and what Nigerians are saying about stolen funds. Uh, I wonder how disturbing this is. Uh, Dr. Kerry, let me start with you on this. Thank you. Well, it, it will always be disturbing, but you know, the, the challenge I'm having with this issue of uh, looting mm -hmm. is that it has become a recurring decimal. It has but become. Isn't it, it, it good that uh, the looted funds are coming back? What I now see with looted funds being repatriated or being discovered, whichever, <laughs> is that every stolen fund is now a batch of loot. Okay. Perhaps just the way you can call oil producing states, Niger Delta, even when they are not within the Niger Delta region, all stolen funds are now being described as a batch of loot. Because sometimes. <laughs> so whether they are, they are whether under they were a batch of loot or, or not, not. yes. <laughs> Chances are so that even even, even has even become a metaphor. That is the name now. Oh, even politicians now steal and call it Abacha loot. I think that's what's going on. Otherwise, you know, I keep wondering. Abacha was one of the least traveled presidents or heads of state. In fact, I, 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 I don't know if there's any record of where Abacha traveled to outside Nigeria. Mm. But everywhere you hear of Abacha loot, America Abacha loot, Switzerland Abacha loot, here and there, you'll be wondering, was it fl how was this money flying to all these places? Nobody has ever mentioned the route, the banks, the resources through which these this, this monies were, you know, taken away. But you keep hearing about well, that. From now, from but, but again, we are being told that over 62% of the current budget, if you look at it yearly, that is what is stolen by Nigeria. Now, uh, you begin to wonder, yes, stolen by Nigeria, where is the money kept? Mm. Because if, you, if such monies are stolen and invested in Nigeria, at least it will still spread within Nigeria. But you find out that this is what we use in building other economies. And after that, we start going there for slavery uh, and, and even, dying in the Mediterranean yeah, and even, the rest of Even it. besides the money stolen and taken out of the country, a, a lot of some of this, from the reports we have uh, at our disposal, said that a lot of these monies are kept at home and at warehouses and so on. If they are left even within the system, it would have even uh, because, be better. Yeah, left within the system is where yeah. you would trace them. Let, you don't want them to let, be let, <laughs> <laughs> let me come to you. Oh, my God. Oh my God. If you, let, me, let me come to you on this. They, there, was, there was a TSA that was launched by this government. The Treasury, you know, singular, uh, the Treasury yeah. sing, singular Account. Yeah. There was a whistleblower yeah. policy. And, and all of that to check all of the money is siphoning here and there. How effective are all of these from your assessment so far? Not effective, if you ask me. Mm, That's the not? truth. I'm still surprised <coughs> that Nigeria is still standing with all the money that we hear that are siphoned mm. or stolen. Remember when the whistleblowing thing was going on? Every day you wake up, oh, X amount of money at Kaduna Airport. Mm. Oh, X amount of money at one eco We residence. no longer hear oh. of, of money from whistleblowing anymore. And you wonder what's going on. <laughs> Were those things staged? How did we end with all of those stories? What I see now, sometimes you get mm. tired of talking about Nigeria. There are times that I, I just go to bed and I end up not sleeping. Till 6 a.m. my eyes are open because I'm thinking about Nigeria. You had to take a holiday from the country mm. just, just recently. Yes, I do. You were tired I, of this story I, I, I have to just take some time <laughs> off. But let me say to you all, mm. we, need to, we need to look inwards. Because when you look at it, look at it, 62% mm. of the total budget stolen by who hmm. then you look around you still see the same people who are accused of stealing this money they're the same people in power are moving freely and moving freely yeah, what's going to happen it, it is an allegation until he goes through a court and then the court pronounces the person either you were you stole the money or you guilty or not before the you person see, can that, uh, that, that is part mm. of the problem i will have with this no, the cost itself has to operate but it's a challenge where you will see somebody stealing then you wait for a, a judge who was not there to not tell you that the person stole a lot of evidence. But, but Dr. Yeah, let it's me even surprise the two challenge. of you it's 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 amazing the kind of reputation that nigeria has outside the shores uh of this country i had the opportunity of going to the icc and nigeria kept you know the name coming kept up. coming up my colleagues who went with me, they were looking for their flags. They couldn't find it. I found <laughs> the Nigerian flag. They didn't know why their flags were not there. But we talked about Nigeria. And I oh found out God. that 
issues happening in Nigeria. Of course, <laughs> the ICC is having what we call the preliminary examination. They're still examining what's happening here. <laughs> and I was asking myself, how bad can it get before they come to investigate? Well, it could take years, 10, 15, 20 years mm. before they launch that investigation. But look at it. We have a very terrible reputation. Mm. Something needs to be done. Something about seriously it. needs to be done. Dr. Kerry, when the whistleblower policy started, yeah. we, we were hearing of oh, man, no, all yeah, yeah, yeah. of a sudden there is no more. Uh, is there better collaboration no, now? No, where it, it, it's possible <laughs> that they have devised even stronger and more strategic even the ways ones of that were the recovered. Mm. Who owned those money? We still keep hearing of okay, some persons have even recovered. I mean, a blue whistle that. Nothing was done. And <laughs> no matter. The TSA was implemented, and yet we still heard NMPC pay monies. That so it means that there are still some group of people who still don't operate the TSA or who are not part of the TSA. That's right. So, so if, if from the, the, the federal government we still have such practices, is it the ones that are, that are done by some individuals that the stolen funds from some private quarters that are going to be more serious? Okay. Well, the, the new Nigeria is a joke. No. It's a huge well, joke. Yeah, we need to. Our, we our need dear to country out. cannot Honestly. be a joke. It but, is. The, but the point there because is, we, we have, facts. Dr. Kerry, we have a new dispensation now. Let us see, what because the, the, the president has said that, the president has said that this new dispensation is going to be surprising, it's going to be tough. That the oh, that, that let us, that the oh, let us, wait. Let, let us, let us, give, say, let us give the government no. the benefit of the benefit doubt. Of the doubt. Uh, that yes. the older, exactly. that the older <laughs> the man is going, the, the smarter is going to be? Well, is anything, that what you are anything saying? can change. No, no, Dr. Kerry, thank you so much for coming on the program. Thank you. you really thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you for watching as well. You're watching TVC Breakfast and we are streaming live on YouTube. You can connect with us on Twitter using the hashtag TVC Breakfast.